Today I want to do some work on pre-binomial expansion and we're going to start this off by thinking about standing at a bus stop. How many different ways can four people stand at a bus stop? Well, if this group wasn't stood there, I would have a choice of four different people to be this first person at the bus stop. Once I've picked one person from that group, there would only be three left for that second choice, two left for the third choice, and I'd only have one person left for the fourth choice. Now this, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, in mathematics, we write down like this, and we read it as 4 factorial. So this exclamation point at the end is read as factorial. If I was to write down 5 factorial, we would understand that to mean 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. n factorial becomes n times its predecessor, which is n minus 1, times its predecessor, which is n minus 2, and so on and so on and so on, until we get to times 2 times 1. The last thing I should mention at this point is that 0 factorial is 1. Factorial is a very useful way for working out the number of different arrangements that we have of a set of objects. But what if I didn't want to arrange all of the objects? What if I only wanted a subset? So what if I wanted to arrange four of the colours from a set of seven? Now here, I'm still thinking that order matters. That means that if I'm picking the colours, yellow, then green, then blue, then violet, that is different from yellow, then green, then violet, then blue. To do this, well, I've got seven different choices for my first colour, so that would be seven. I've got six different choices for my second. I've got five different choices for my third. And I've got four different choices for my fourth. Now that almost looks like factorial notation. Almost. I'm just missing three times two times one. But so as not to fundamentally change my answer, I'm also going to divide by 3 times 2 times 1. Now what I do have is factorial notation. The numerator becomes 7 factorial and the denominator has become 3 factorial. Now how do we get there from 7 and 4? Well, 7 factorial is easy, that's just the, the set of objects that we're picking from, but where did that 3 come from? Well in total, I've got 7 objects that I'm picking from. I'm choosing four of those objects. Well, that must leave me with seven minus four of those objects left. So another way of writing this would be to say that this is seven factorial over seven minus four factorial. Or if I wanted a more general version, instead of saying four colors, I would say R. Instead of saying seven, I would say N. And my general formula becomes n factorial over n minus r factorial. And this tells me the different orders I can pick r objects from a collection of n. And that's exactly what a permutation is. It's the action of changing the arrangement, especially the linear order, of a set of items. But what if order doesn't matter? Let's think about the lottery, and definitely not playing the lottery. How many different ways can you choose six numbers from 59? Well, we've just seen the permutations of this are going to be 59 factorial over 59 minus 6 factorial. And that will tell me how many different ways I can make arrangements of six from a group of 59 objects. Now, here, as we've already decided, the arrangement 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 would be seen as being different from 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 5. But we know in the lottery that that doesn't matter. In the lottery, order doesn't matter. So if I'm not concerned with order, how many different ways are there of doing this? Well, let's think about how many different ways we can order six items. That's very similar to our bus stop problem. I can order six items sorry, in six factorial ways. So if I want to remove the different ways I can order these items, I simply need to divide this value by 6 factorial. And this becomes 59 factorial over, and we typically write this down as 6 factorial, 59 minus 6 factorial. Now this works out to be a very large number. Fortunately, if you look on your calculator, 
just above the division symbol, you will see that there is something that says NCR. So you can type in 59 shift divide 6 and it will show on your calculator 59 choose 6 which just so happens to be 45 million and 57,474 which again if you were looking for a reason not to play the lottery the odds of winning are 1 in 45 million 57,474 if we want a generalized version of this I'm picking R objects from N then obviously our formula is going to become n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. And that's exactly what a combination is. So a combination is a selection of elements from a larger number without regard for their arrangement. So, so far we've talked about n permute r, which was n factorial over n minus r factorial, where order did matter. If I'm looking at combinations, I'm looking at n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial where order doesn't matter because I've divided out that different order. As I say on a calculator this can be found just above the times key so this is written down as n p r and this can be found just above the division key which is written down as n c r. The last thing I wanted to show you was just a couple of examples of n choose r. So another way of writing down n choose r is to say n r in column notation. Now this can be a bit confusing because it can look a little bit like vectors but hopefully we see by application when we're dealing with permutations and combinations and when we're dealing with vectors. Now n choose 0 becomes n factorial over 0 factorial n minus 0 factorial which is well, n factorial over 0 factorial n factorial. Now these will cancel out, leaving me 0, uh, sorry, 1 over 0 factorial. Now fortunately, earlier on, we've decided that 0 factorial is going to be 1, so what I have here is just 1. Let's look at n choose 1. That would be n factorial over 1 factorial, lots of n minus 1 factorial. Now here it's going to help us just to rewrite our numerator as n times its predecessor, n minus 1, all over 1 factorial, n minus 1 factorial. And we'll see we've got cancellation and this just becomes n. You can play around with these to your heart's content. The last thing I want to show you is Pascal's triangle. Now Pascal's triangle you may have seen before. It's very quickly formed by saying 1 1, 1, 1, add the 1's I get 2, 1, 1, add 2 and 1 I get 3, add 2 and 1 I get 3, 1, and so on and so on, where the two terms above form the term underneath. Now what has this got to do with what we've been through today? Well, believe it or not, this can be generated by the combinations that we have talked about already. The top line is seen as being 0, choose 0. The second line is seen as being 1 choose 0 and 1 choose 1. The third line is 2 choose 0, 2 choose 1, 2 choose 2. The third line is 3 choose 0, 3 choose 1, 3 choose 2, 3 choose 3. Now if you haven't seen the magic before, grab a calculator and prepare to be excited. As we saw from a previous example, n choose 0 is always going to be 1, n choose 1 is always going to be n. So here, anything choose 0 is always going to be 1, so this becomes 1, 1, 1, 1. Anything choose 1 is just going to be itself, so that becomes 2, this becomes 3. Now, short bit of work, actually, we could go back to here to show you some symmetry. So if I've got n choose n, n choose n would be n factorial over n factorial n minus n factorial which then becomes sorry n factorial over n factorial 0 factorial which is exactly what we had on the top line so we know that this just becomes 1 
So that means that this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, and hopefully it's not going to take you too much convincing that this coefficient here happens to be 3. And if I was to do this for my next line, which would be 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3, and 4 choose 4, that these are also generated through Pascal's triangle on the fifth line, which is just here. So these would be 1 as agreed, 4 as agreed, 2, uh, the next one would be 6, we would need to do a little bit of working out for that, not too much, 4 factorial over 2 factorial, 4 minus 2 factorial, well what's that, 4 factorial is 24, 2 factorial is 2, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 factorial is 2, so this becomes 24 divided by 4, which is indeed 6, look at the magic just working for us, and so on. This is going to become immensely useful when we go on to our next video.